An urban heist adventure and arguably the mother of all mega dungeons feature prominently in two new books that Wizards of the Coast recently announced for D&D. We also recently got some rumors of possible new settings for D&D, or rather old settings that are finally being brought to 5th edition. This and a whole lot of other interesting news and rumors came out of the stream of many eyes, which was Wizards of the Coast second annual D&D live stream extravaganza in Los Angeles, California. Thanks for joining me today as we dig deeper into these announcements and I share what excites me most about what's to come. My name is Nate and you're watching WASD20. Thanks so much for joining me. Today I want to focus mainly on the two new books that were announced, but I also want to discuss the rumors of new settings and a couple other little announcements. So first, the first book that was announced on Friday of last week was Waterdeep Dragon Heist. Now both of the new books are set in the city of Waterdeep and have that title Waterdeep colon. So Dragon Heist is going to be an urban heist adventure. The city of Waterdeep, of course, is one of the most expansive metropolitan centers of civilization in all of the D&D multiverse. And I think it's really cool that we're getting a book that I'm sure will give us a lot of information on this city. And my hope would be that it will give a DM the tools in order to run sort of a sandbox campaign in this urban playground. But of course, it will be a full-blown storyline as well. It's all about a great amount of treasure that has been stolen and the player characters must keep it out of the hands of several villains, yes, many villains, who are competing and trying to get their hands on that treasure. Uh, so I think that's really interesting. We're bound to see a lot of familiar faces. If you know Waterdeep, Jarlaxle features very prominently on the cover. Of course, Jarlaxle is this drow assassin who lives mostly on the surface nowadays. He's well known as a very dangerous individual, a ne'er-do-well who has lots of connections in the crime circles of Waterdeep. So while the concept of the urban heist adventure is really interesting, I'm glad they're tackling something different. What excites me most is that possibility of having a tool set for running urban adventures in general. And Chris Perkins did hint that this book would have a lot of that sort of thing. So that does excite me. They do mention that as the book is set in Waterdeep, it's not gonna be a whole lot of hack and slash because you just can't do that in a city without being arrested. So I think the adventure will really reward out of the box thinking and a lot of role playing and kind of espionage and all this stuff, which is kind of cool. In connection with this adventure, there was an announcement from Beetle and Grimms, who is announcing this Waterdeep Dragon Heist Platinum Edition, uh, which is just this huge $500 package of all sorts of accessories for this adventure. So while it has a pretty steep price tag, it is limited run, it's some kind of collector's edition. Um, I think probably once you break down what all you're getting, it's probably a decent value. I'll just read off the list here of what they're saying will be included. High quality battle maps, maps of Waterdeep, 20 plus miniatures, broken out module books, original artwork, dungeon master screen, coins, tokens, badges to hand to your players, and much, much more. So I think it's probably gonna be a really cool package, but man, that's a steep price tag. My only fear with that is that new players see this sort of thing and think that, man, D&D is really expensive. I think we have enough of that problem already. When I was a new player myself, looking in from the outside at Pathfinder, I thought, man, this is expensive. But the reality is, of course, we don't need all this stuff. It's just gravy for those who have the money and want to spend it. The second book that was announced coming out of the stream of many eyes is Waterdeep Dungeon of the Mad Mage. And this, my friends, is the mega dungeon Under Mountain. Under Mountain is directly under the city of Waterdeep. And the Yawning Portal is actually built over one of the biggest entrances into Undermountain. And that was one of my complaints about this book, is that they give us the Yawning Portal, they give us this tavern that is very famous for being an entrance into Undermountain, and yet they don't give us anything actually about Undermountain in the book. In their defense, that would be a monumental task, and they wouldn't have any room for any of the other cool adventures that are in this book. But it just seemed like, why use that framing device when you're not giving us Under Mountain? Anyway, now they're finally giving us Under Mountain, and personally, I'm pretty excited about that, because I think that Wizards of the Coast can really pull this off well. I'm just excited to see what this amazingly talented team does with the Mega Dungeon concept. There's bound to be a lot of politics. It is absolutely huge dozens of levels, maps for every level, 
Tons of monsters, factions. You've got the Mad Mage himself, Halister, who is this very old mage who has been imprisoned or trapped in Undermountain. He has seven apprentices, all kinds of crazy stuff I'm sure will ensue. You've got a city itself in Undermountain in the city of Skullport, so that's pretty amazing. Of course, Xanathar is in Skullport. Anyway, you can see where this is going. It's gonna be mayhem. It's gonna be one big giant dungeon playground and I cannot wait to get my hands on it. Once again, not even so that I can run this adventure, but more because I'm sure it will give us dungeon masters who do homebrew a lot of our stuff, a lot of tools for dungeons in general, and just a lot of inspiration and ideas. While Dragon Heist was levels one through five, this one is actually seen as a direct continuation of that, so they can be used in conjunction or separately. Undermountain will take players level six through 20. So again, it is huge. Lastly, let's talk about rumors of possible new settings that, or rather old settings that are now being finally brought into D&D fifth edition. There was a good video a few days ago from Cody over at Taking 20 as he did some analysis of these announcements and rumors of new settings. I recommend you check it out, it's in the video description. Uh, but to kind of summarize things, he referred to an article on comicbook.com where there is an interview with Nathan Stewart, who's the brand director over at D&D, and he says, quote, next month we are going to talk about a couple of different settings that people can start playing as early as this year, end quote. So that itself is really exciting, but uh, temper your expectations because from here it gets a little bit confusing and I'm not totally confident that this is gonna be what I want it to be, a complete, here's a new setting book for D&D or an old setting rather. Like here's a, here's a Dark Sun book for D&D 5th edition or here's Eberron, here's how to do Eberron in D&D 5th edition. That would be awesome. That is what I and I think a lot of other people want as well, but if you listen to this, I don't think that's what we're getting. It says, these new publications won't be full-blown storylines, noted, but rather an introduction to different worlds set inside the D&D multiverse. And then Nathan Stewart says, it's going to be more like at the level of how Barovia, introduced in the Curse of Strahd adventure storyline, is in terms of stuff. Here's a thing that's going to give you a taste of the setting, but we're not going to that setting yet. We're just letting you get in there and start doing it. Mm, that's not sounding like they're gonna give us a whole lot, but they could surprise us. We'll have to see when they announce this next month, so stay tuned in July sometime. They should be announcing something about new settings. It's a little confusing to me, to, to me that they say this is not gonna be a full-blown storyline, but then they compare it to Curse of Strahd, which, correct me if I'm wrong, people, but isn't Curse of Strahd a full-blown storyline? I don't know, I don't actually own it, but that was my impression, a full-blown storyline that also has some little tidbits, well, actually quite a bit, about the setting of Barovia, because of course you're gonna want some setting information if you're running an adventure there. So it seems like they're gonna be doing something similar, but we'll have to wait and see. Anyway, there were a whole lot of other news and announcements coming out of the stream of many eyes, but those are a few that I wanted to talk about. I'm interested to hear what you guys think. What settings would you most want to see for D&D 5th edition? What do you think of the new books that are announced? Are these books that you are excited about? And those of you who watched a significant portion of the stream of many eyes, what are some of the other announcements that they made that get you excited? I want to thank you all so much for joining me for this one, and I want to give a special thank you to my patrons for their support of this channel. Patrons are people who support WASD20 on a monthly basis, and even a dollar a month can all add up to make a very big difference for me, so I really appreciate it. Patrons, you rock. Of course, there are other ways you can support this channel too. Even giving it the good old thumbs up below is greatly appreciated. Make sure you're subscribed and stay tuned for more videos. Everybody take care. You'll see me again very soon.